Hello again. I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the influences on the consumer decision-making process. Um, that five-step process that starts with problem recognition um, doesn't happen in a bubble. So there's influences on it. And in fact, there's four major areas that have an influence over the purchasing process for a consumer. The first one is the marketing mix elements. You know what those are. Those are the four Ps. I'm not going to go over those in too much detail because we'll be talking about them for the rest of the semester. But I do want to talk a little bit about some of the psychological factors, situational influences, and sociocultural influences as well. I'm actually going to start with the situational influences, but um, I want to show you this first just because it kind of visually shows you how the consumer decision-making process, the purchase process, is affected by these four areas. Okay, let's start with situational influences because I think that's the easiest to explain. Um, and there's a couple of areas uh, that sometimes confuse students, so I want to just clarify basically so that you know exactly what falls under situational influences. It's kind of like it sounds, whatever situation you are in will influence the purchases that you make. First and foremost, we have something called purchase task. Purchase task just means what is the reason behind the purchase. So, for instance, if you are buying something for yourself, you will be influenced by certain things as opposed to, say, buying something for a family member's birthday present. You will be influenced to buy other things um, because of the reason behind the purchase. Secondly, we have our social surroundings. So, this is kind of like what it sounds like, too. The social group that you might be with um, will have some sort of influence, generally speaking, on what you purchase. A lot of consumers report that if they are with friends or family members, they spend more money than if they're shopping by themselves. Additionally, things like Tupperware parties or those candle company parties or Mary Kay examples, um, those kinds of things also kind of fall under social surroundings. You know, if you're at a Tupperware party and somebody is showing you all the products and all the people around you are buying products, you feel compelled to buy products as well. So that's an example of your social surroundings influencing what you purchase. Next, we have physical surroundings. And there are a, lots and lots and lots of research out there about how physical surroundings affect our shopping experiences. So companies are looking at things like lighting and music and displays and how tall the shelves are and things like that in a store because those physical surroundings will absolutely have an effect on you. Um, let me give you an example. So Nordstrom's. Many of you may have been inside of a Nordstrom store before. We don't have one in this area, but if you ever have the ability to go to one, I would strongly recommend that you do because they've spent a lot of time and energy looking at physical surroundings as a mechanism to influence shoppers. They do some interesting things, like for instance, there's not any windows in their stores, nor are there any visible clocks. Why would they do that? Well, they do that because they don't really want the shopper to notice the passing of time. Additionally, um, they will have uh, really soft music playing in the background, and their stores are lit in a certain way um, to sort of guide consumers through the store um, and their their displays and their aisles also coincide with that. Some Nordstrom's shops also have a grand piano in the middle of them and they will have a piano player playing at various times during the day and they have found that when the piano player is playing their revenue goes up as a result and so it's kind of an interesting thing when you look at how powerful physical surroundings can be on a consumer. Next, we have temporal effects, and we also have antecedent states. And I'm bringing both of those up at the same time because a lot of times students get confused about this terminology, and these terms, while they sound kind of complicated, are actually just representing very simple things. Temporal effects has to do with time. So the time of day, the time of year, the time of season, all of those things will have an effect on a consumer. Um, you know, if you go into a store right around Halloween time, you know, a lot of times they've got fall decor up, sometimes even Christmas decor up, holiday displays. This is all because they know that consumers will stop, start thinking about those things at that certain time, and so they want to put the products in front of them to try to influence their decision making. 
Antecedent states just really has to do with your mood. How do you feel? Have you ever heard the terminology retail therapy? Well, that's a true thing. Sometimes when people are feeling down or feeling blue, they spend more money in an effort to make themselves feel better. So that's just antecedent states. So there's our situational influences. So let's move on to the next category, which is our psychological influences. Psychological influences just have to do with our own psychology. So motivation will play a huge role in what we shop for. If you read in the notes further that I have for you, I have a lovely little model called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs that kind of shows how motivation can be a really driving force in marketing. Next, we have personality. Everybody's born with a personality and it evolves over time. Um, this is a hard thing for marketers to use to try to sell things to people, but it is something that we have to pay attention to. Perception. Perception has to do with how we gather information on things and how we make judgments. And I'm going to talk more about that in just a second. Learning. We learn over time whether we like products or don't like products. And so marketers need to contend with that also. Lastly, we have our values, attitudes, and beliefs, how we feel about things and how we choose to live our lives. What we like to do, what we like to spend money on, what we like to do in our free time. All of those things fall under psychological influences. Let me talk a little bit more about perception because this is an interesting thing, especially for marketers. Perception has three main components. And again, perception is how we form judgments on things as consumers. So perception has to do with selective exposure, which means what messages do we let in as consumers? And we let a lot fewer messages in than we ever have before. So this job is getting really hard for marketers to get messages into the brains of consumers. Part of the reason for this is because consumers are bombarded with marketing messages. Studies show us that marketing messages the average American is getting on a daily basis is around the 3,000 to 5,000 mark per day. That's a lot of messages. So to actually expose ourselves to these messages as consumers is very difficult. We just don't have the brain capacity to process that many messages. So we kick things out relatively quickly, which makes the second step even harder, selective perception. That means, does the consumer actually understand what the message is? And if a consumer doesn't understand, then they kick the message out really quick to make room for a different message. And then third, do we remember the message? Most consumers don't remember messages. So this is, this is getting really, really difficult for us marketers out there. Getting things into your brain, getting you to understand them, and getting you to remember them so that you can form a perception. This is, like I said, already three times this is getting very difficult to do. Okay, let's move on to the last category I'm going to talk about, which is sociocultural influences. This just has to do with your socials surroundings and any kind of culture that you might belong to or have grown up in. So let's start with personal influence. Personal influence are the people around you that have some sort of personal influence on you specifically. And there's two broad categories of this. First one is opinion leaders. So opinion leaders are anybody that leads your opinion. Sometimes in commercials or in ads in magazines or things of that nature, you may see a celebrity endorsing a product. That is an example of an opinion leader. Sometimes it's a sports figure, sometimes it's an actor or actress, sometimes it's somebody in politics, but those people are being paid to endorse a product because those people influence some consumers. Another level of personal influence is something we call word of mouth, and it's kind of like what it sounds like. When somebody is talking to somebody else, about a product or service that they might be liking or disliking. Okay, that's word of mouth. Now, word of mouth also can happen electronically though. It's, it's not actually words coming out of your mouth, it's now words coming out of your keyboard, but this has some serious power out there. If you are writing a review on Yelp or TripAdvisor or something along those lines, you are still engaged in word of mouth and that will still have an influence over some other, probably a whole bunch of other consumers um, decisions. All right, reference groups. 
anybody that we belong to, any group of people that we belong to, this is probably going to have some influence over our purchasing decision making. So if you belong to a club or fraternity, sorority or church group or or even a sports team, all of those things, those people that are in those groups with you, they will have some influence over what you purchase. Any group that you aspire to belong to may also have some influence over you. Or conversely, any group that you do not like and do not want to be like, they will also have an influence over what you purchase or don't purchase. Your family is definitely going to have an influence over you. A lot of us, as we get older, we end up buying some of the same products and services that our families used when we were growing up. Um, and so this will change over time, certainly, but huge amount of influence here. And then last but not least, any culture or subculture that you belong to will also have an influence over you as you are going through the purchase decision making process. All right, that is it in a nutshell in terms of the influences that affect us as we are making decisions on consumers. Continue to read through the notes because there's some additional information in there for you. Um, but again, if you have any questions, please let me know.